Would you like to make a podcast? Spotify has a way to let you make one easily, distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place, for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit right from your phone or computer, so you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify, and everywhere else, podcasts are heard. And video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free. You know, ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I've enjoyed sharing my favorite stories with children around the world. If you've ever thought of starting your own podcast, download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. Welcome to Bedtime Stories. Please make sure you subscribe to get notified of new stories and, of course, share them with a friend. And now, Bedtime Stories presents... How the Leopard Got His Spots Long, long ago, Leopard lived on a hot, bare, sandy, yellow plain in Africa. Giraffe and zebra lived there, too, along with lots of deer, big and small, young and old. The animals were sandy, yellow all over, just like the plain itself. Leopard was sandy, yellow too, which wasn't good for the rest of the animals, because Leopard was hard to spot on the sandy yellow plain. He could lie in wait in the sandy yellow grasses, then jump out, catch them, and eat them up whenever he wanted to. Giraffe and zebra and the rest of the animals lived in fear. Leopard, however, was very happy and never hungry. After a while, Giraffe and Zebra and the others had enough of this. They decided to move away from the sandy plain to find a better place to live. They walked and walked until they came to a huge forest where the sun shone through the trees, making stripy, speckly, patchy shadows and sections of spotty, stripy sunshine. The animals hid themselves there, and while they hid, partly in the sun and partly in the shadows, their skin changed color. The giraffe skin became covered with big, brown, blotchy spots from the blotchy shadows he stood in, and zebra skin became covered with stripes from the stripy shadows he lay in. The other animal's skin became darker, too, with wavy lines and patterns from the shadows around them. Back on the sandy plain, Leopard was puzzled. All the animals had disappeared, and he was starting to get hungry. Where have they all gone? He asked the baboon. To the forest, the baboon said carelessly, and they've changed. You need to change too. Leopard started to ask baboon what she meant by change, but baby baboon needed to be fed, so she was too busy to explain. Leopard set out for the forest. He walked and walked, and at last he found it, but all he could see were tree trunks. They were speckled, spotted, dotted, and splashed with shadows. He couldn't see giraffe or zebra or any of the others, but he could smell them, so he knew they were there. Leopard lay down to wait. After a long, long time, something moved in the shadows, and a small deer trotted toward him. But the sandy yellow leopard wasn't hidden in the leafy green forest, so the deer saw him at once and skipped away. All Leopard could catch was its tail. I'm too small to fill your belly, cried the deer. Please let me go. The deer was right about that. It was tiny and thin and not really worth bothering with, but Leopard kept hold of its tail anyway. Hmm, what's happened to all the animals? asked Leopard. We've all changed, the deer replied. Now our skins are speckly, spotty, dotty, and splashy, just like the shadows in the forest. You only caught me because I'm young. I should have been more careful. Leopard let the little deer go and sat down to think. So that's why I can't see giraffe and zebra and the rest of them in the forest. They've changed their skins to match the shadowy trees. 
If I'm going to catch them, do I need to change too? And how in the world can I do that? As he sat there thinking, more deer walked through the trees. When they moved, Leopard could see them clearly. When they stopped moving, they were hidden by the shadows. Leopard was easy to spot with his sandy yellow skin, so the deer did not come close. Leopard sat in the shadows a long, long time and licked his paws thoughtfully. Soon, he began to notice something odd. His paws weren't sandy yellow anymore. They had small, dark spots on them, and there were spots on his tail, too. Leopard looked around and realized that the spots on his skin matched the small, dark patches of shadow he was lying in. Ah, he thought. The shadows have made these spots just in the time that I've been lying here. That's how I can change my skin, just like giraffe and zebra and the rest of them. By this time, Leopard had grown tired of all the thinking and waiting, so he laid down and fell into a deep sleep. When he woke up a long, long time later, his skin was completely covered in small dark spots made by the shadows of the forest. Well, how wonderful, he said, looking at his new skin. Now that my skin is no longer sandy yellow, brownish, I can hide in the leafy green forest so that giraffe and zebra and the rest of them can't see me. Then, when they come close, I can leap out and catch them and eat them up. With that, the spotty leopard set off into the speckly, blotchy, stripy shade of the deep forest, where he lived happily ever after, eating and sleeping and not being spotted. Thank you for listening to Bedtime Stories. Please make sure you subscribe to follow us for more stories and, of course, share them with a friend. You can get notified of new stories on Twitter and Instagram, at Magic Monorail. If you have a suggestion for a new story, send us an email, magicmonorail at gmail.com. Until next time, good night. <laughs>